Well, let's say you're very warm welcome and thank you for joining us on this independent off-tube studio commentary. The game at the Vitality Stadium has just got underway. Our referee, our new Premier League referee for this match, Matt Donoghue, has just got uh, proceedings uh, underway. And uh, although this is by the seaside, let's hope that these two teams aren't on the beach because they're really... Arguably, both uh, Bournemouth and Brentford have got little to play for in terms of uh, European places or survival. Uh, both these teams have uh, uh, sorted out their survival situation by now. But Bournemouth can still try and push for a top 10 finish and Brentford can still try and get at least one place above where they are now, which does actually make a difference in terms of prize money at the end of uh, this season. Let's hope it is going to be a, a nice day in the uh, south uh, coast sunshine. A lovely day across the country today. It's myself, uh, Paul Shabakovich, and uh, John Hogan taking you through the action. John, sometimes these games can sort of uh, fizzle out and be a little bit disappointing, but conversely, two teams that like going forward might just go for it this afternoon. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, the pitch looks good for this time of year, doesn't it? And, you know, uh, it looks like they're playing on a lawn. I, I, I don't know what's not to enjoy. The, you know, the fans out, the shirt sleeves. It's like all of the atmosphere. And if they're not on the beach already, when Tony's thinking about his next move, he'll want to do well. You know, players have always got their agendas. I don't see why it's not going to be a cracking game, this. Let's hope so. There's plenty of uh, action at uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon across the uh, the Premier League. All the games are available on our service. Just to remind you that in the earlier game today, uh, Fulham lost at home by four goals to nil against uh, rampant Manchester City. But uh, Brentford now have a free kick around 30 yards out. Tony was brought down. The ball is uh, put into the penalty area. It's quickly cleared and uh, back into midfield. Just to remind you, Travers is in goal this afternoon for Bournemouth. A back uh, four of Smith, Zabani, Sanessi and Kelly. Cook and Christie are the holding midfielders with Semenyo, Kleiber and Otara as the attacking midfield three behind Solanke. Do the Brentford 11 in a minute because they're on the attack now, the Bees. The ball's got towards the edge of the area. Pinnock was still up after the free kick. He rolls the ball towards uh, Lewis Potter on the uh, right-hand side. And then it's Ayers cross into the penalty area, which is uh, headed out. It might go out for a corner. It doesn't. It just goes out for a uh, throw to Brentford. Uh, down the left. So they have Flecken in goal with a back four of Ayer, Collins, Pinnock and Sergio Regulon. It's Damsgaard, Norgaard and Yano as the uh, three in midfield with Mbumo, Lewis, Potter and Tony as the front three. A throw on to Brentford then down the uh, left-hand side. And it is going to be uh, Christian Norgaard trying to uh, send this one long into the uh, penalty area. Brentford playing in their uh, uh, light blue change kit, a sort of a homage to the uh, change kit they had back in the late 80s. It's not brought them much luck this season, that, uh, that kit. It has to be said, the ball into the box is uh, easily dealt with. And a second chance potentially for Norgaard uh, down the uh, left-hand side before eventually he's having to go uh, square towards uh, Yano. Brentford's attack just fizzles out, but still with plenty of players forward. And Bumo tries the ball down the left-hand side. Brentford want a corner. I think they're going to get it. So it's been a bright start here for the visitors. Yeah, doing all right, aren't they? Uh, and like I said, there's always agendas. Uh, players moving on, uh, those who want to shore up and... Uh, you know, it, it's always a trial, isn't it? But, uh, yeah, Brentford uh, have made a good start. Need to get Tony involved. Uh, there may be some sort of bad blood and all that. He's on his way, and that's always a, a bit of parting, isn't it? He's a good player, though. Uh, and like I say, he'll want to do well. Ball fizzed into the box there. What's the referee giving here? Looks like another corner. Uh, I mean, it's a great start here for Brentford. They, they've got Bournemouth penned in, haven't they? And uh, it's uh, playing where they want to be. Absolutely. The idea is just to try and uh, put that to home side under pressure. Bournemouth have been uh, improving as the season has wore on to the point where their manager, Antoni Rireola, has been is one of the candidates for the uh, manager of the season. Um, but, of course, it tends to be uh, somebody from uh, further uh, higher up the league, but you never know exactly what uh, the panel will say. Brentford with this corner kick. It's a low one from Sergio Regulon. Uh, fired at uh, Pinnock. He wasn't able to try and get that towards goal first time he tries a second time it's eventually cleared by Christie down the uh, right hand side here for Bournemouth but to the last man covering there for Brentford on the uh, halfway line looks like it was uh, Lewis Potter does a good job there as well just uh, slows things down and is able to uh, get the ball back uh, towards uh, Nathan Collins I don't think I'd be giving uh, Iraola any prizes for this season I mean you know uh, I, I think that Bournemouth spent uh, a lot of money wisely and it takes time for uh, those players to bed in. But they have spent a lot of money, you know. And I look at their squad, and it's a mid-table squad, and that's where they are. You know, so uh, sort of well done for that. Uh, yeah, I, I think possibly it's because they had such a bad start that, the, that maybe that sort of swung it in, in some people's eyes. I mean, to a lot of people, the fact that Gary O'Neill's not even on that list when you consider that he took over what seemed to be a bit of a basket case at uh, Wolves at one point at the start of this season. And uh, if anything, their sort of season's tailed off a little bit after starting so well. Well, I think yeah, with Wolves, it's, there's more merit. You know, that was going to hell on a handcart, wasn't it? <laughs> and, you know, 
Uh, lesser manager, I think, could easily have been dragged in. But uh, it's like, ooh, so, uh, so what Wolves are mid-table? And then nobody seems to, to care about that. But, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, O'Neill's a great manager. Here come Brentford again. They're still on the attack. Ooh. It's been a really bright start here for the Bees. The ball whipped in from the left-hand side. It was a shot come cross, which Travers does parry. And it's cleared back into midfield. It drops to uh, Christian Norgaard. Bournemouth have really had uh, no uh, possession in this game so far, other than, other than clear, clearing the ball away from their own penalty area. It's Collins now on the halfway line for Brentford. A first-time pass forward there from Tony. Uh, doesn't reach its target. They wanted a free kick there, Brentford. Referee not interested in And a quick ball played towards Dominic Solanke. He's not had a touch of the, uh, the ball yet, but that one is uh, dealt with by Pinnock. He goes uh, back towards Flecken. Now it's uh, just a bit of an awkward ball there at the edge of the uh, Brentford penalty area. But uh, Collins does deal with it, and it's cleared up towards half an line. Unbelievable possession stat there after six minutes. Uh, 4% for Bournemouth, 96 <laughs> for Brentford. I, I'm not sure Brenford have ever had that in any five-minute spell <laughs> ever in the Premier League. No, and I, I don't think that'll continue. It can't, can it? But, uh, yeah, they've made a great start. They're back on the ball. Uh, they're playing with vitality today. Oh, there's Ooh. a shot. Travers there uh, just getting across. A good, strong left hand that. I think that shot's going in. Um, it's Potter. Yeah, it's a good effort from him. You know... We've seen him uh, uh, play as a fullback, haven't we, this season? But he wants to get to further forward. He, he's got an eye for goal. It's a decent strike, that. It is a decent strike. There was Tony running just across the island of the goalkeeper whilst being on side as well. So that possibly just made it a little bit more difficult for Travers, who gets down and makes a, a decent save. With it being the end of the season, it is a form of second-choice keeper, Travers, that gets the, uh, the start. Uh, this afternoon, it's going to be an outswinging corner from Damsgaard from the right-hand side. It's uh, missed by Wisser at the edge of the penalty area. And in fact, there was some pushing and shoving uh, inside the uh, the penalty area. And Bumo there, a judge to have uh, uh, bumped into a Bournemouth player. That will be a, a free kick. It was uh, Mbumo's uh, foul. Just to tell you as well, very quickly, Luton have taken an early lead away at uh, West Ham. Sambi Conga. Uh, with the goal, of course, uh, Brentford aren't worried about uh, relegation anymore, but there's still a fight uh, going on. And uh, uh, Luton, with that uh, goal, if they can hold on to that, they'd be level with Nottingham Forest, although Forest do have a 10-goal uh, difference advantage over Luton. So it does seem like it's a tall order for, for the Hatters now. You know, they keep on going, though, don't they? Uh, I thought they'd sink like a stone this season, but they, they really uh, play with great credit, and that's not patting them on the head. They, they have. You know, I think they've done as well as they can. I mean, usually the wheels would come off by now and there'd be calls for the manager's head, all that kind of thing. But, you know, none of it. They've kept going and they've acquitted themselves well, haven't they? They certainly have. I mean, they were the, uh, the playoff team from, uh, from last season. When you consider how well Burnley had played throughout most of last season and Sheffield United were always sort of second to Burnley. Uh, the fact that those two teams really have struggled compared to how well Luton have done, be it uh, it's still <laughs> odds on that all three of those teams will be the ones to go straight back down again. But uh, Luton doing what they can just to try and upset that uh, particular prediction. Uh, eight minutes on the clock here, unofficial independent off-chip shooter commentary. It's uh, still goalless, but it's still Brentford very much in the ascendancy. And there's a lovely bit of play here down the left-hand side. Tony finding Regulon at the edge of the area now. It's an opportunity here for a damp scar. A ball coming in. Tony was the intended target. That's a good header away by Zabani. Loose ball here in midfield, hooked up in the air uh, by uh, Semenio. And then it's Clivert uh, chasing this one down the uh, right-hand side. He's been stopped here by uh, uh, Vitaly Janot going uh, back towards the uh, halfway line. Things just uh, slowing down for uh, Bournemouth now, but at least they are into some uh, some kind of uh, possession. Looking to try and uh, force that uh, on Brentford, who've made a decent start, forcing just one save, though, from uh, Mark Travers. It was a good strike from uh, Keen Lewis Potter from the left-hand side. Long diagonal ball now from Senesi. Picks out uh, Semenio. It's been uh, marked there by Regulon. It goes back towards Cook. And then Semenio carried on his run. And he gets a ball in from the right-hand side. Aimed at uh, Dominic Solanke. But that's a good clearance from Pinnock. Yeah, that's better from uh, Brentford, uh, from uh, Bournemouth. Um, Brentford defending in their own half. Uh, uh, clearly, they've looked at the uh, yeah, you know, the, uh, the weather gauge and said, right, I'm not going to go chasing round today. Uh, uh, so they, they're dropping below the halfway line. And, and we saw Bournemouth just prodding the ball between the, the two centre-backs and, uh, and Brentford weren't tempted to go over the halfway line. So, you know, when they're on the attack, they're, they'll uh, burn as much energy as they can, but when they're defending, they're, they're just going to be nice and neat today. And it, it made, That might just allow uh, Bournemouth an opportunity. It was a decent ball out from uh, Semenya, but there probably wasn't enough bodies in the box room to find. 
Here come Brentford again now. It's a quick ball from uh, Damsgaard from the left-hand side. Doesn't reach uh, Mbuma, doesn't reach Tony. Now it's uh, Lewis Cook for uh, Bournemouth, playing a quick square pass. And Otara asking quite a lot of his uh, team there. I think it was uh, Cliver that was expected to chase that one down. But uh, Brentford now uh, back in possession. Long ball from uh, Norgaard down the uh, left-hand side. Lewis Potter is there, but so is... Uh, uh, Adam Smith and uh, the captain doing very well. They're just winning the ball and going back towards uh, Mark Travers. And clearance now from the uh, Bournemouth keeper over the halfway line. Regulon watches that one, heads it forward. Damsgaard almost runs into a Norgaard, but Brentford have the ball back. And it's clear that uh, the Bees have started with a bit of a spring in their step that might have just surprised Bournemouth to some extent. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, uh, just a wasted ball from the Boomer there. But yeah, they've been on the front foot and uh, maybe they can go again. Um, yeah, the, and they mixed up the passing as well. You know, it's not just all to feet. We saw a long ball over the top there and uh, Lewis Potter nearly getting on the end of it. You know, uh, so, uh, yeah, quite surprising uh, sort of how they're going. But really, I, I think, uh, again, Thomas Franks, uh, he's quite a savvy fella, you know, uh, uh, and he's got his own ideas about how he's going to do it. But clearly they're conserving energy because it's hot. Uh, but there's plenty of movement, to, you know, when they have the ball and they, they can go long as well. So they're, they're really mixing it up today. They are. And uh, for all the problems that Brentford have had this season, they are now confirmed as uh, being a Premier League side for the fourth season in a row, which uh, really, when you consider where they were 10 years ago, 15 years ago, is quite incredible that uh, they've got to that uh, position at all. But uh, uh, just under a little bit of pressure now as a loose ball is uh, given away in midfield and Semenya now pushing forward for uh, Bournemouth down the right-hand side. Just leaves the ball here for a Smith on the right wing. Things just slow down for the Cherries, but at least they are in possession inside uh, enemy territory. Back towards uh, Senesi. Now it's with uh, Lloyd Kelly. Left-footed ball over towards uh, Atara. He tries a quick one too with Cliver, which I thought would pass from Cliver, maybe just a little bit quick, but uh, still seemed there was enough there for Atara to get on the end of it. It's out for a uh, Brentford throw. Christopher Ayer in the uh, Batman mask this afternoon, just uh, trying to protect a facial injury. Plays the ball up towards Tony. He goes back towards Regulon, and uh, Brentford now pushing forward down the right hand side as Regulon goes over to Ayer. Ayer now finding Mbumo. He gets into the penalty area down the right hand side. It fires a ball in, easily dealt with by Senesi. Norgaard then leaves the ball for a Damsgaard just outside the penalty area. And it's Janel playing the ball in towards Regulon. He floats the ball into the penalty area. That's Ooh. good. Well, well it, was, it was the right idea from Lloyd Kelly. He just wanted to chest the ball back to Travers, but he probably put a bit too much on that in the end, and it ended up being a good save from Travers. Yeah, I mean, it's all right chesting the ball back, but the ball's dropping on the keeper. Uh, right, you know, He's picking up right at his feet in the end. Um, he's probably just going wide of the goal too. Uh, yeah, probably good defending in the end, isn't it? Uh, maybe Travers making it look a little bit more complicated than it need be. But you know what? Brentford's good start continues. Uh, like watching him boom on the ball. He's had his injury problems this season. Uh, you know, uh, the team's been without uh, Tony for a while as well. But still kept going, didn't they? And, uh, and I, I just thought, you know, a credit to them. You know, uh, I think with Thomas Frank, it, 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 there's a solidity. He knows exactly what he's doing with the players that he's got. I think the problem is transitioning into something else. It, one or two players drift off, players come in. But, you know, it, you'd, you'd like to add better players, you know, two or three a year. Whether they're able to do that, I'm not sure. Well, I would agree that I think Brentford uh, at times have been found out this season in terms of being this sort of plucky team that can shut teams down and then go on the counter-attack. You can't really build your entire sort of uh, team style of play around that. They can do that against certain opposition in certain games, but they, as I agree. I think they need to be a bit more expansive against uh, teams around them at home. But uh, it's Bournemouth on the attack uh, down the uh, right-hand side. Semenyo's ball into the penalty area is uh, stopped in the combination of uh, Collins and uh, now uh, Lewis Potter at the edge of his own penalty area trying to get the ball away. Lewis Potter running into uh, Christie. In fact, he's going to be given as a free kick to uh, Brentford. Well, he may, may have even got out for a throw to Brentford in any case. And you mentioned uh, Thomas Frank and trying to get the best out of this Brentford team. Uh, for all the problems they've had in their last couple of seasons, perhaps uh, having a bit of a, a shaky start, they've never actually spent a single day in the bottom three. So they've always been just above it, or even a, a lot further above it by the end of, uh, of last season. I mean, that is great credit, isn't it? Because it's not easy. It's not a huge budget. Uh, you know, you can go on those death spiral runs where... You know, you hit some bad form against teams in and around you, then it's like, oh, your next three fixtures are Liverpool, Man City and whoever else. And you think, well, how are we going to get a point? 
you know, you, you, you can lose the plot to, uh, at that time. And if you get injuries like they've had this season, it can go wrong really quickly. But I've got to give uh, great credit to him. And I think you know, maybe if he had a, you know, a few better players, then we'd be talking about him as a potential manager of the season. He got stuff about him. Um, I, I, some of the stuff I think, well, I, I, I just wonder. But, you know, at times, they'd, they'd, I think he'd like to be a 4-3-3 all the time with attacking players. But he... he even he knows he can't quite do that all the Against time. Against certain teams, it's going to be a struggle. But I think but for, all the, for all that we said about Thomas Frank, Iray Ola, I think, deserves uh, credit as well because Bournemouth made a very difficult start to the season. I actually remember uh, an interview that uh, their chairman gave on the radio saying that I take responsibility for this. I wanted a different style of play, and if we go down, it's my responsibility. But in the end, it never, it never seemed to be a problem. Bournemouth uh, got out of relegation trouble fairly early on this season. Well, that, yeah, do you know what? They were, they were a lot more pragmatic last season, but they had to be under Gary O'Neill. You know, this is a job that uh, sort of nobody wanted. The manager said, well, we're not going to stay up, so I'm, I'm getting off. You know, Gary O'Neill uh, uh, did a better job, didn't he? It was a decent-looking ball to menu, but didn't quite uh, uh, find its man, and I will deal with that. He will, yeah. I mean, just to say, if, if you're worried that, we, that you're missing the action, it really hasn't been too much. Bournemouth are just starting to, to sort of phase into the game now. And, oh, ta- whoa, that was a decent effort there from Antoine Semenyo. He uh, saw an opportunity there. Bournemouth just in a little bit of uh, slow, sedate possession inside the Brentford half. And then Semenya, 25 yards out, took a touch. Nobody closing him down. I'll tell you what, he really put his laces through that, but it's just over the bar. Yeah, it's, it's one of those that when he booted it, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's kicked it. He's off the ground. He's hit it that hard. But, uh, you know, maybe too hard. The ball just uh, didn't drop in. I think the thing for Bournemouth, it, you know, uh, it's all about, oh, Irel has got a style and all that. They were pragmatic uh, last season, this season. Four two three one, but you know what? That's almost as old as the hills now. I think uh, teams have got the antidote to that. Anyway, we'll break off because balls in the box hits uh, Solanke on the head rather than him heading it, uh, and it's it's gone out of the near post. Well, it has. I mean, it all started from Brentford playing out from the back. They made a bit of a mess of it uh, after a goal kick after that strike from uh, Semenya. It was a terrible sort of clip ball back from uh, Norgard to Pinnock, putting his defender under huge pressure. Pinnock then gives it away, and the ball eventually finds. Uh, Semenyo and his cross, as you say, it almost hits uh, <laughs> Solanke rather than him actually heading it. But uh, Brentford with a bit of a let-off there. Semenyo's done well uh, again there. The, there's nothing going for him. But he, he somehow turns it into a cutback. And from out of the blue, Travis has had to make a save there. Cameron was looking at what we were just talking about. And then the next thing we see, uh, Travis throwing himself to the ground, yeah. saving uh, from Ivan Tony. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, it's Ivan Tony hitting this one from uh, at least uh, 30 yards out. He's hit it low. And as I say, we were still getting a replay of the, the, the Brentford mess at the edge of their own penalty. A live pitch as we come back, and it's Tony's effort, which has forced a good save from Mark Travers. So we're Brentford straight up the other end, winning themselves a uh, corner kick. And so just uh, waiting for everyone to get into position here as well. Getting word of a potential goal for Brighton away at uh, St. James's Park as well. Brighton need to finish the season strongly after a bit of a, a dip in the last couple of months. That's a poor corner from the uh, left-hand side. It's hooked up in the air. It goes out uh, potentially for another corner to Brentford, this time on the uh, right-hand side, although I think uh, Travers was suggesting perhaps it shouldn't be a corner. But in any case, the first ball wasn't good enough. No, that's right. Um, again, uh, we've just seen signs of life from, uh, from Bournemouth, but <coughs> Brentford have made a good start to the game. Um, <coughs> Tony looks up for it today. Uh, Soto and Bumo, like I said, both the, those had short seasons, really. They'll be looking to do well. And now they've got a corner kick. They've got height about them uh, to Brentford. Be a uh, out swinging corner here from Mikel Damsgaard. It's aimed at the edge of the six yard box by the near post. I think it was Norgard that died for it. He didn't get a touch on it. And then there was uh, sh- some pushing and shoving there that the referee, uh, Matt Donoghue, wasn't so impressed with. And so that will be a, a free kick to Bournemouth inside their own penalty area. Brighton have taken the lead away at uh, St. James's Park. And it's uh, Joel Veltman, collector's item there, a goal for the, uh, Bour- uh, for the Brighton right back. And as we mentioned earlier, Luton, uh, goal up away at West Ham. All the other games, uh, this game here, Bournemouth, Brentford, Everton, Sheffield United, Tottenham, Burnley and Wolves against uh, Palace. All those games are goalless uh, for the time being. We're now back in play here with uh, the home side in possession. A long ball over the top from Ilya Zabani. Good header away uh, by regular. There may still be a chance here for Solanke to keep it in play for Bournemouth down the right-hand side. He leaves it for Semenyo. Now back with uh, Adam Smith. Square to uh, Ryan Christie. Slightly deeper here for uh, Lewis Cook. He goes across towards uh, Senesi. Just like to uh, get forward and uh, join the attack. It's amazing, isn't it? City started to allow their centre-back to, to join into midfield, and now everybody's allowing it. Yeah, it's right. You know, uh, 
I mean, we're, we're, we're seeing all that. It's Derry Gurr now for the uh, full-backs to invert. Shot straight down the middle there, and that's an easy save for Mark Flecken. Uh, yeah, Dango Watare, I, I mean, he... You know, he doesn't get many goals, does he, really? Again, he's one of these, he's a nice sort of player, quick and lively, but does he quite get the return? I'm not sure. It's the, it's the problem with, with him, isn't it? Because he, he's got all the skill, but you, you, you give him five starts and he doesn't get the five assists or three assists or two goals. Then you start using him off the bench. You'll do something good for half an hour, then you want him to start again. But it, I think it's always a problem for the, for the sort of the wire players that did commentary of the earlier games today where... Just this is what I thought about Adama Traore. He's got all the physical attributes, but just sometimes lacking in terms of actually being on the ball. As uh, Christopher Ayer probably does something there that would have amused the home fans. He chased the ball all the way down the right wing, all the way to the Bournemouth goal line, and then he tried to slide in to stop it from going out for a goal kick and just missed it. Yeah, uh, took his eye off the prize there for a second. Yeah, the, there's there's a few of those players who were just like lightning, but yeah, you're you're always looking for the end product, you know. Uh, I'd rather have those that, that that sort of go under the uh, under the wire like that, you know. Maybe not so quick, but they've got a trick or two and an eye for goal. It's the stats a, a killer's aren't they for some of these guys? But Witari is quick and you know he, he adds a lot. He, he's got a lot of energy, but uh, just needs to sort of convert into chances and goals. Well, Brentford would like to convert all this possession they've had into more chances. So 21 minutes on the clock, it's still goalless. Brentford still in the ascendancy, although not quite that dominance we saw in the first six seven minutes where they had 94 uh, percent possession at one stage it's down to about 72 percent now as the ball's played towards the edge of the area headed on there by Mikel Damsgaard but uh, not enough on that one for Mbuma although uh, it looked like uh, Kelly wanted that to go out for a goal kick it didn't quite have enough on that uh, ball for, for that to happen but he does well to at least to uh, win the uh, throw off Mbuma and a chance now for Bournemouth to try and uh, play away from danger get this ball a little bit uh, further uh, up the field so, so far, it's been a pleasing uh, game from uh, Thomas Frank's side. Probably just would have liked to have had a couple more efforts on uh, Mark Travers's goal. I think it's 50-50 this game. Uh, and I know that Brentford have had uh, probably more possession. Those early stats, 96%, wasn't it? R ridiculous, really. But they had made a good start. Uh, now it seems a bit more even uh, here. A chance for Cliver, maybe. Yeah, a lot of space for Cliver in midfield. He gets the ball into the penalty area. Semenio, oh, he tries to go for the sort of near post uh, top corner finish when really it was just inviting him to play it across the keeper and low because uh, Brentford midfield completely opened up there. Yeah, I mean, some things are time honoured, aren't they? Uh, when you're in a position uh, like Semenya, I, I think go across the goalkeeper. If he parries it out, he might go to one of your colleagues. That's the reason that they do that, you know. And also, his weight's going in one direction. You want to put the ball the other. But we see nowadays uh, uh, players think, oh, no, I'll stuff it in at the near post. He didn't get it right, did he? Uh, so he might have done better going to percentage play, maybe with the benefit of hindsight. Uh, you know, he'd think, yeah, that probably was the right thing to do. Yeah, maybe he, as you said, maybe thought with his balance, uh, his body just moving over to the side, he probably just wanted to use that before he was uh, uh, due to fall over. But uh, Bournemouth win the ball back here in Brentford territory. It's out for a throw down the left-hand side. Dangaro Tara going uh, back towards uh, Lloyd Kelly. And uh, Senesi now across uh, towards the uh, right-hand side for Zabani. See what I, I think uh, Bournemouth look more beachy than uh, than Brentford today. Uh, you know uh, they've been very sort of very almost too patient on the ball really, uh, uh, and this is when they get in the Brentford off when because Brentford not really pressing them. But well, uh, there's a poor ball. Semenya tries to make it a good one, but. Uh, again, it's too easy for Brentford, and uh, now they're on the counter attack. They are, and it's a quick ball from uh, Damsgaard straight towards the right wing here for Brian and Bumo. We need some support. Support's arriving. Aya's gone in on the right hand side, and oh. Bumo just holding onto it for too long. Perhaps a little bit too selfish there from the Cameroon international. Then a quick ball play down the left here, and all of a sudden, Bournemouth are on the attack. It's with Solanke at the uh, left hand edge of the penalty area. He needs some support. He tries to get that ball in towards Clive, but that's good work, though, from uh, Collins. And as it turns out, uh, the referee has stopped play anyway, I think, for uh, a player down. Looks like Mbuma's complaining about a uh, facial injury. But we're over the halfway mark in this first half. 24 minutes gone. It is uh, Bournemouth nil, Brentford nil. Unofficial independent off-tube studio commentary. And it will be John to take us through to half-time. Yeah, I mean, it did get caught there. I don't think there was anything in it. Senesi's uh, elbow into his chops. And, you know, uh, one of these things when you're scrabbling for the ball... That happened because Mbumo had uh, just a bad touch. Ball got away from him and then you're running into an elbow because you're desperate to get the ball back. But uh, one of those things, uh, Senesi can be uh, a big, vigorous, uh, agricultural-style player, but I, I, I couldn't lay the blame at his door uh, there. 
Yeah, we hadn't had any goals, Paul, but uh, you know the ball's popped about a bit. It's a bit of a clash of styles as well. Um, an interesting game. Uh, I don't know much about the referee. Where camera just lingers on him. Uh, so far, he, he's had nothing to do really. Uh, been a, a, a good, clean game. So, uh, Mr. Donahue, is it? Yeah, it he, is. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he did the uh, Leeds versus Southampton game. That was the last game he did. He gave out seven yellow cards in that game. He had Huddersfield against Birmingham uh, the week before and gave out five in that. He's been a fourth official in Premier League games uh, this season, but this uh, appears to be his uh, Premier League debut. Here's Mbuma on the ball, right hand side for uh, for Brentford, held up by uh, Kelly. Ball back on the inner. Maybe a chance here. Uh, uh, well shielded there by Norgard and ball out to right for uh, Ayat. Back on his inside. They've got to go again here, but they're keeping hold of the ball. Uh, Janelt uh, now just forced to go uh, backwards. And uh, then the ball scraped forward. A little bit of passing and moving. As uh, I don't know, uh, one of the centre backs, I think Collins may be uh, bombing forward there. Now he's bombing back, but he, he'll get back on the ball. Chance to go again. Uh, this time for Ayer. Now and Bumo able to run into space, but uh, Wittara gets back to him and keeps him honest there. Again, it was an indeterminate touch, really, from Mbuma. Then a percentage ball into the box. He's, uh, he's nodded away. Solanke picks it up, and he's done well to recycle it and find a colleague. Now out on the right-hand side, it's Christie. Uh, uses the ball pretty well, and then the Semenyo. Uh, he's uh, beaten the first man. Fine, Solanke, this is uh, better. They've got Wittara. They've got Clive in the box. Can he find? Goes for a strike, and he makes the strike work. Oh, it's Solanke. It's a beautiful hit. And, uh, well, between him and Semenya, it's a good goal. But I think uh, VAR's going to take a look for one reason or another. We'll have to wait and see. But, I, I, you know, I don't know. It looks a good think, goal to well, me. The, the, the finish itself is fine from Solanke. There's no, no issue with him being offside. I think the problem is, as far as uh, Brentford are concerned, there's some concern here that uh, maybe there was a uh, handball on that uh, touchline because certainly the Brentford bench all had their arms up as soon as that ball was lost by Brentford around about the halfway line. I'm, I, my, I was thinking maybe Semenya had taken the ball out. And maybe, like you say, it was a handball. It got very tight, didn't it? They were, they were, claiming <laughs> a, they were definitely claiming a handball as Semenya uh, uh, made it past his market. Uh, and then the rest of it, uh, Solanke drives past Pinnock, uh, couldn't get goal side. A bit disappointed by Fleck in there. VR is taking a look. Um, so, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see, of course, whether that's, uh, that goal has been given. There has been a... Well, from that angle, from that still that we've just seen, it looks to me like uh, uh, Semenya has patted the ball forward. Wait and see whether or not VAR see it the same way. Uh, Bristol Palace have taken the lead away at uh, Molyneux, and it's uh, Michael Elise with the goal for Palace. The referee is uh, coming across to see the monitor, which isn't as uh, suspenseful as, as we once thought when VAR was first introduced. It pretty much means he's, he's going to change his mind, then, isn't he? I, I would have thought so. I mean, yeah, so I, I, uh, this is good, I think, because he's saying, look, you, you couldn't have seen this. It's through bodies, but this is what we're showing you uh, because it's pertinent. You look like he's dragged the ball with him. You know, the, the claims of, uh, of handball uh, from uh, Reguillon were quite right. You know, it was blatant, really. Um, well, well, I mean, I'd, 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 he's a little bit unlucky for Semenyo, but then you can say his hand moved toward the ball slightly, like he's flicking it forward. It did. I mean, there, there was a time... I mean, the, the handball rules seem to change every season, don't they, in terms of what's deliberate, what's accidental, whether it can happen during a goal-scoring sequence. Referee has uh, blown, and it's going to be a uh, free kick uh, to Brentford. And as I say, the uh, Bournemouth players won't be happy. But uh, say, if it happened to them, they'd be expecting it. It's uh, you, you can't have a... Uh, an accidental, there's no such thing as an accidental handball in the build-up to a goal. That's, that's, that's what we're trying to no, say. Uh, yeah, exactly right. Um, you know, so many took a, 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 a taken an unfair advantage, if you like, with what happened. I'm not, I'm not saying he did it deliberately. It's one of these things. But equally, you know, you, you can't let that stand. Um, Iraola looks uh, miffed about it. But honestly, I mean, uh, you know, we keep... keep Everybody's got their viewpoint, right? They do, of course. Yeah, I mean, f from his point of view, his team have scored a decent goal and now suddenly the opposition have got a free kick on the halfway line. So obviously he's not going to be too happy. Brentford have taken that quickly and they're on the attack now. Yeah, and Boomer now. The ball uh, bounced over Kelly and uh, two and Boomer, who uh, he finds a little ball on his inside. He's going to get it back here. Uh, Kelly gets goal side. The man down. And I think Lewis Cook uh, is uh, a judge to have uh, fouled Damsgaard. So that looks like it'd be a free kick uh, for Brentford. Yeah, get, get back to the Iola. Did, it's like the kids, aren't they? I have to pretend 
uh, that we've just had an injustice done to put pressure on the referee. Well, do you really? Well, it, it's it's almost like it's part of the the sort of the the TV setup, isn't it? That the decision's gone against you, so now they expect it's no, it's no point to, to Iriola clapping the manager saying you, you did the right thing. You're obviously going to protest that he's not happy about his team having a goal chalked off. Meanwhile, a second goal for Palace, so two goals in just three minutes. Elise made it one nil, and now Jean Philippe Mateta has made it two nil uh, to Palace away at Wolves. Yeah, there'll be a lot uh, looking for a release here, won't they? Uh, such a good player. And uh, JP, uh, what season he's having? Uh, he's turned a corner and I think his manager likes him. Anyway, uh, here we go. Free kick into the box. Uh, headed uh, back where it came. Breaks to him. Boomer left-hand side of the area. Scrapes it in, but it's not a good ball. And uh, the out ball now. Sees him Boomer chasing back uh, over the halfway line. Hard work for him. But he gets there first and he goes back to uh, Flecken. So... Uh, yeah, Brentford made a good start, got a, a bit of a shock there, ball in the back of uh, their net, and it was a good strike really from Solanke, and like I said, a bit disappointing for Flecken to be beaten from that angle, but of course it, it didn't matter. Didn't matter in the end, the goal was uh, chalked off, and now we've almost come back to the sort of uh, uh, set-up we had in the first 10-15 minutes, where it's Brentford back in the ascendancy, they now got a, a throw on uh, deep in Bournemouth territory. So here we go, uh, lovely sunny day at the Vitality Stadium. You know, uh, Bournemouth's a great place to be when the sun's shining. Uh, now we're out in the promenade uh, next to the beach. Good long stretch of concrete. Uh, all sorts of bars and all that. Anyway, the ball into the box has been defended. Breaks back to him. Boomer might just put percentage ball in. He does. But that uh, makes it easy as well for Travers, who uh, gets his hands on it. Um, he's made a couple of saves in the game, hasn't he, uh, Travers? Uh, one of them, I thought, that he, he pushed out and the ball got away from him. It uh, might be a bit hot and slippy today, that uh, light football that they play with now in the Premier League. But uh, anyway, uh, so far uh, Flecken has not had a right lot to do, apart from maybe he's picked the ball out of the back of the net because there's been very little on target to, towards him. The ball goes towards uh, Ivan Tony, but it's not a good ball and he can't keep it in. tony has been a little bit quiet this first half. He's not, he's not had the service, really, has he? And uh, he's dropped off a couple of times. Of course, he had that snapshot just after uh, uh, we saw that uh, effort from Bournemouth going uh, just wide. I uh, can tell you as well that uh, there's been a goal at Goodison. Everton leading against uh, Sheffield United uh, by a goal to nil. It's uh, Ducouré with the goal for uh, the Toffees. Yeah, so, um, yeah, their season uh, looked uh, perilous, didn't it, at one point? But uh, pretty comfortable as Pinnock comes across there. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good effort that uh, he now picks it up under a little bit of pressure but finds a good ball forward and uh, maybe a chance here, a little uh, heel. But uh, the ball has gone out of play. That uh, was off at Smith, though, as uh, Brentford have it back. And now uh, Lewis Potter inside the box. He cuts back. He's got an opportunity here. From Bumo, stabs it towards goal. It's blocked away. It's also ball comes back and a shot comes in. From Ranger Ivan Tony's effort must have uh, gone off the defender uh, Kelly. Uh, I guess it's going to be a corner. I think it's a corner. I mean, the, the the thing I was surprised about, I thought there was an offside potentially here in uh, Bournemouth's favour, but there isn't because that defender, I think it is Adam Smith, he dropped uh, far too deep, and then that allowed Lewis Potter to ghost in, and he's not offside. It was the right decision for the flag to stay down. And it's just sod's law from uh, Brentford's point of view that it dropped to Mbumo's right foot. And there was a defender on him as well. So the strike was immediately charged down before Tony's effort deflects wide for a corner. Yeah, I think Lewis Potter's done really well there. Uh, Smith wants to join his defensive line, but it's too late. You know, uh, and Lewis Potter just spun round him. Yeah, really sloppy that. You know, I mean, it suggests to me that the, the fullback wasn't watching the defensive line. You know, then he looks across and he, he's put his team in, in, in trouble. Here, uh, Brentford uh, fire a ball in from the left-hand side again. Uh, maybe a chance with uh, with Tony. Uh, just forced to go backwards now. Uh, Jan Elt, uh, was there a foul? Well, uh, Tony's down. And indeed, uh, it's going to be a free kick for uh, Brentford. Uh, yeah, referee given a free kick there. And uh, just to say, two quick goals at uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Burnley took the lead at Spurs after a goal from Jakob Brynlas. And he's had some uh, goal scoring for recently. But now uh, Pedro Porro, Tottenham's uh, right back, right wing back. He's equalised for Spurs. So it's 1-1. Uh, in that game, and looking across, actually, we're the only goalless game now. We, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was regular on. Uh, uh, by the way, rather than Tony, twelve rather than seventeen. I was looking at, couldn't make it out on the far side in the uh, shadow. But it uh, most definitely was a free kick. It was a poor challenge from uh, Clive, and uh, 
Well, uh, you're either with a jumper on today. It'll be, it'll be cold for him, won't it? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's Spanish heat, but anyway. Well, he, he's, he's, he's certainly heating himself up here with the uh, conversations he's having with our fourth official, Mr. Robinson, because he feels as though there's been a couple of decisions here. It might just be, as you mentioned, that he's doing it out of uh, habit, that their decisions against his team. I don't think there's been anything in particular that's been controversial, but if he carries on like this, there may be a yellow card for the uh, Bournemouth manager. Yeah, it's weird, that, isn't it? But it's like, well, if he, if he doesn't moan, he, is he... He gets the yellow card. He, he, he sort of, oh, he doesn't care. You know, there are, there are many ways of care. I just think it's a bit childish, really. But anyway, uh, he's talked himself into the book for no great reason. Uh, and it's going to be uh, a free kick, which uh, Ragnarion will take. Uh, the ball swinging in. It's an opportunity. And I think it's headed away by Solanke. The ball will played back in, then volleyed uh, clear. Breaks the edge of the area. Damsgaard floats. A decent-looking ball in. Pinnock gets the first header. But then Christie should be able to run it out. <coughs> the outstep of his uh, boot just flicks it away. But the ball's going to come back. And here come Brentford down the left-hand side. It's a great little uh, dribble here from Bregby on. The ball goes too far, though. A bit of adrenaline on that one, all right. You know, uh, beat to two or three. It's a poor ball in in the end. It's, it amazes me how often you see that. Players, as you say, it's exactly the right expression there as well, that it's an adrenaline rush. It's the fact that he's gone on a great run and he's just... In that moment, he just wants to hit that ball hard when really what he's got to do is just a little cushioned flick ball into the box. You've got three players waiting at the edge of the six-yard box and any kind of ball other than that would have probably found them. Exactly. Uh, you know, they're all in a line, aren't they? You know exactly where you're going, but it, you know, he just balloons it in the end. Like I said, I, I don't know, but uh, I'm, I'm sure balls always used to be a little bit heavier. Uh, so many shots from range now, you see you know, flying over the top. Well, it's the, it, the manufacturers are trying to just uh, get that perfect shape and weight so, that the, so the, that the ball develops movement because that's what we love to see in those slow motion HD replays to see how the ball dips and swerves and changes direction. Of course, I mean, there's people saying that uh, potentially Roberto Carlos' is famous La Tournoi goal wouldn't have happened if they hadn't have changed the ball a, a few months earlier to, to make it that little bit lighter as well. So there's always that. But uh, in the meantime, uh, Brentford have lost the ball and there's a free kick against Bournemouth here. Well, there, there was a free kick given as, as the ball was played into the back of the net. It seemed like it was a bit of a, uh, a mess for Brentford at the edge of their own box, but it looks like the referee had blown the whistle already. I, I thought it was a free kick, but we'll take another look at it. Um, I comes to get it. It's on the chest of Ooh, Collins. Oh, it's not much of a foul on Collins. Uh, <laughs> Solanke tangles with him, but does he pull him back there? We need to take another look at that. I instinctively thought it was a foul. Um, I, I, I think you, you think less of, of, of that decision. But I, I don't know. We'd need to see it again, really. It, it, it didn't look massive. but It seemed to me like that because defenders now have learned how to show a referee that they've been fouled, it was almost like Collins felt that he was being held onto by Solanke and then hit the deck. But I didn't think there was much in what uh, Bournemouth's number nine today. We'll see another replay here, John. Yeah, he takes it on his chest and, and he slips. Uh, I, I, and I, I felt that was it. It's a great shot then from Solanke. We've seen it from all sorts oh, of angles. I mean, there's, there's the t when you consider that so in some games at various times, players chasing after the ball get shoved in the back and the referee sees that as a shoulder-to-shoulder, -shoulder, that is never a, a free kick for, my, for me. I think Brentford have got away with one there. Yeah, if I'm mitigating for Nathan Collins, I will say that he read the play pretty well. He got goal side, didn't he? So he's got Solanke on the wrong side and he's shielding the ball. So when he goes down, he, he, he's like strikers backing in and going down. You know, it's a bit like that. So it's a cheap one, but uh, I, I, I sort of understand why it was given. He's very unlucky, Solanke, because it's just good play that. And there'd be many referees who, who would just let that stand, wouldn't they? I think they? so. I think so. They would let VAR sort of sort that out. And I don't think VAR would say that there was an obvious error. But here come Bournemouth. Oh, Ooh, that's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate, in fact, because Dango Otaro on the left-hand side wanted to fire a ball across the penalty area, and he ended up hitting his own teammate. Yeah, I, I wonder what he thought he was doing there. You know, uh, maybe uh, he thought Solanke could drag it in, but at that rate of knots, it's like a shot. You know, uh, you can't really control that. Um, and so for me, it's, it's a bad ball. You know, again, Solanke's playing well. He's a big, strong uh, fella. I think he feels confident now as well. You know, he's got the goals. He, he knows he's the man. You know if, you, if you're going to get him that you're going to get X amount of goals a season, he'll bring others in and he, he'll genuinely play pretty well. So I, I think that gives you confidence after a while. You know, he's been there and he's done it. Uh, he's confident in what he can do, you know. So Justif Justify that number nine, I think. He's, he's always been a forward with plenty of skill, but not really the goals. But this season, that's, that's changed. He's actually getting the goals as well. Yeah, I, I think he's definitely turned the corner. I, I don't think you've put the uh, genie back in the bottle. Uh, not as long as he stays fit. Anyway, the ball out with the Lloyd Kelly left-hand side. 
Um, Clivert uh, goes back. Uh, Cook uh, gets it out of his feet again. Um, Brentford uh, not really closing down. Janel just says, well, hang on, we're a bit too static here. And he chases after the ball. Quite right. Because I'm pretty sure Thomas Frank said, well, you know, uh, when they get over the halfway line. But here they are with the Witara. And it's a dreadful shot. Scraped it with his left foot. And uh, Keeper's just watching that go. Well, he could have thrown his cap on it if it was anywhere near him, but it's not. Well, it's, it's doubly frustrating here for Bournemouth because not only is it a really bad effort from Otara, he wasn't forced to go for goal there. He had so many options to try and just play it square. Solanke was over on the left. Clivert was just over to his right. And in the end, it's a poor dragged effort that didn't even have much power on it. Yeah, when we're talking about Solanke being uh, you know, comfortable in his skin in that number nine role and worth his place in the team, Otara is like he's got to do something incredible. You know, but that leads to doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. Here in Boomer flicks the ball forward, but he can't find Lewis Potter, who's just creeping there. Obviously, Damsgaard can't work out who it is, but uh, probably Lewis Potter down that left-hand side. I think it was, was Lewis Potter, yeah. Both teams have five efforts on goal in this game. The one effort on target from Bournemouth, uh, two efforts from Brentford. And uh, as I say, it has, it has been a fairly open game. We were, we were worried it might have a little bit of an end-of-season feel to it. Bournemouth started in that vein, but it's almost like Brentford being up for it has sort of got them up for it now as well. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, you know, I think the Cherries at home, uh, there's no reason why they, they wouldn't play well in front of their fans. It's a beautiful day. We're tiring now in the half turn. This is what he does. Well, he's got pace of back, and Boomer can't get to him. He drives now. The ball out to right-hand side, asking an awful lot, and it's easy uh, to defend. Wrong but option again. Yeah, I th- again, it's just, you, you know, you, you want all the qualities of a good player. The ball into the box here is an easy pick for Flecken. Comes out and gets it. Wittara showed his pace on a half turn there. And we know on Bumos quick, he couldn't get anywhere near him. But then I, I just saw your head when he flicked that ball out of his feet out to the right. And we thought, no. But no, it was, it, it, as I say, it was, a, it was a hopeful ball out to the right wing, which might find a teammate. And he actually had two options for teammates that were within 10 yards of him, where the, the, potent, the probability of him finding a teammate is much higher. And he would have kept the move alive. It's just, as you say, he's trying the overcomplicated sort of fancy ball when sometimes just a nice square pass keeps the move going. Yep, I want to say uh, keep it simple, stupid, don't they? Uh, but uh, yeah, trying to complicate things and going for a ridiculously hard ball, really. Uh, uh, Semenya's not seen uh, enough of the ball today. I really rate him. Uh, he's strong, talented. He has got an eye for goal, and he uh, has certainly cemented his place in this team as the uh, flag has gone up uh, this time on Solanke, trying to roll through the middle. But uh, just had strayed with 43 minutes in. It's still goalless. Sun shining at the Vitality. A beautiful day. Uh, uh, they could be playing long balls out there. And this pitch looks great, doesn't it, for this time of the season. But, um, yeah, it's uh, prompted some decent play. Uh, the, the, the bees are mixing it up a little bit. As, uh, you know, uh, they've, they've gone short and long. Damsgaard brings the ball in. He goes left-hand side. Lewis Potter then. Uh, He's had a, a good game so far. He broke that offside, didn't he? Put a good cut back in, but Mbuma's shot was blocked at source. It's probably as close as uh, the Bees have got. And, uh, well, Bournemouth thought they'd scored, but there was a handball in the build-up from Semenya. A little bit unlucky, I guess. And then when uh, Solanke put the ball in the back of the net, we thought he was uh, incredibly unlucky because it looked a real uh, soft uh, decision that he'd uh, fouled Nathan Collins in the build-up. But uh, and, and again, all eyes on the referee. And, you know, uh, we're talking about players uh, not cementing their place in a team, but for officials as well. You know, it, 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 it's always a trial, isn't it, by ordeal uh, when you're in the Premier League? Oh, it is, absolutely. But I'm, I'm, I mean, again, the Smith bumping into Regulon there. Smith's unhappy there, the Bournemouth captain. But I think if Regulon had run into, him, run into him like that, I think Smith would have expected a free kick as well. It's just a little bit too much, I think, in the, in the collision. As I say, I mean, it's uh, in many ways, it's, it's a good time to be a, a football league referee because the Premier League referees have had so much stick. And, you know, some of it is gratuitous, some of it is deserved because they have made some ridiculous errors, particularly when they've got 20 cameras and video replays to help them. But uh, an opportunity here now for Brentford with this ball in from uh, Regulon. In fact, no, he plays it square to uh, Damsgaard. Yeah, for, to, for a slightly worse angle. I have no idea what they were thinking Absolute about there. Waste. 
Yeah, it was a waste. And, uh, and, and there was a push in the box as well. So, I mean, it didn't matter in the end because the ball was so bad. It never, there was no danger of anyone in the box going after it anyway. And I never see the point of uh, making the angle even worse. When, when you see a free kick and it's straight down the middle, the ball usually goes straight out of play, doesn't it? You think, well, well it does waste, because you if, if you float it down the middle, the defender, the goalkeeper can see it a mile off and they'll either let it go out or they'll come and claim it themselves. Uh, and if you, as I say, if, you, if you're wide and you could get some kind of whip on the ball, then it's always better to do that, really. But uh, teams obviously have been doing that for years, so they're again trying to overcomplicate things too yeah, much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I bet that, that looked a treat on the training ground, but uh, not today. Uh, Solanke, great ball, and he's inside for Semenu into the box. He goes left footed strike, good save by Flecken. Uh, he was at the angle uh, there, just closing down at his near post and made a decent save. The ball back with uh, Semenu, and uh, he now finds uh, Christie. Goes back to uh, Senezzi over the halfway line. And uh, he, uh, a little uh, walk forward there. Ivan Tony will close down. Cuckoo's uh, strike. Well, beaten away by Flecken. But again, uh, it's the Cherries who pick it up. Clive it now. Ball to the far post. Up go the heads. And he's headed up in the air by a defender. Semenya wins the next header at the edge of the box. And the uh, ball will be recycled now with Zabanyi. Percentage ball into the box. No better than that. Headed away by Ayer. And a now uh, maybe a chance for a counter-attack. The uh, ball just chopped, uh, and it's gone straight out, unfortunately, for uh, at Brentford. Yeah, I, just, I, was I, mean, I was expecting somebody there. But. Well, I mean, Ayer obviously hasn't uh, f followed that ball out from the right-hand side, but even so, it, it's not even that much pressure from Bournemouth, but it's really putting a, a real uh, impact here on Brentford as Ayer gets caught there as he tries to play the ball out, and it will be a free kick. Yeah, he, uh, he got the Phantom of the Opera mask today, but... Uh, yeah, he got caught there, uh, just dribbling forward. Um, sometimes, I, I mean, his mass looks quite big, doesn't it? And, and sort of quite bulky, really. I wonder if that's impeding his vision uh, in any way, shape or form. Well, well we're over uh, 45 minutes and four minutes. We've added time had been put on. We're looking at that flecking uh, save of that long shot from Cook. Um, yeah, it's not the best, I, I thought. A couple of times, I mean, the one from Semenya, again... You know, Flecken beats it out. But, uh, of course, you can beat it straight to the path of, of uh, you know, one of uh, your rivals at, the, at that point, if that's the way you're going. And he, he just got lucky. there. Senesi picked up a yellow card for that uh, foul, by the way, on Ayer. So he'll have to be careful. There's another free kick that's gone the Brentford's uh, way. So uh, Bournemouth nil, uh, Brentford nil. Been a, a decent half of uh, football, but not one that's going to live too long in the memory. Uh, obviously, there are talking points. Uh, uh, Bournemouth will feel aggrieved. They've had the ball the back of the net twice. Uh, but one was a clear handball. The other one a bit more of uh, a talking point. As uh, Again, uh, rugby on on the ball. But uh, again, there's no great angle for this uh, free kick. So uh, what's he going to do? Just float it out to the left-hand side. Uh, ball uh, easily defended. And uh, maybe a counter-attack on now for... Uh, the Cherries, but Brentford win it back, left-hand side, uh, Lewis Potter on the ball, uh, maybe a chance for a ball in uh, uh, In the end, uh, they're keeping it tight down their, uh, their left-hand side, Brentford, and they've still got the ball Zabanyi comes to get a foot in and just prod the ball out He does, and it gets a deflection of Collins in the end it's just a bit unfortunate for Brentford that that last passage of play on the left had Collins on the ball he didn't really fancy himself at getting across into the area and eventually, as Zabardi cleared the ball, he did it off uh, Nathan Collins. And this will be a throw to Bournemouth. We've got about a minute of injury time still to play. Yeah, so uh, uh, goalless, but not chanceless. Um, Brentford have uh, given plenty to the game. Uh, started off like a house on fire and uh, really uh, put pressure on uh, Bournemouth early. Uh, I'd say the game's quite even uh, right now. But uh, is anybody going to grab a goal? As, uh, again, uh, lovely car attack. Uh, Clive fires forward. Watara's out the left-hand side. They find Watara into the box. He goes, oh, what's he doing? Awful. Well, I mean, uh, the ball's come across from the right, so it's onto his left foot. And then he, he's now, I, I don't know, I think he's trying to pass there because he put check I mean, side on the ball. I mean, it, it, it wasn't strong enough or accurate enough to be a shot, but then it wasn't anywhere near a teammate to be a pass. But Bournemouth comes straight again, and here is Sadango Watara. Steps onto his right hand side here, trying to dribble, uh, lays it back to climb it. Not the worst thing that he's done there. Again, a little run around at the edge of the box. And Essi uh, touch lets him down, and he goes out left to Lloyd Kelly, spoons the ball in, and that's easy. A good take, really, uh, for Flecken, but pretty easy. Yeah, he just tells his teammates to calm down. He knows that uh, the first half is pretty much uh, done and dusted. 
And as he bowls this one out, the referee uh, will be calling time. So, uh, yeah, he will. And there we go. Uh, uh, no goals in this first half. It's been decent, but uh, I think Bournemouth will feel slightly aggrieved at nil-nil.